Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is our fifth video or our fifth lesson in our series Fiqh of Inheritance Made Easy. In the last video we spoke about those who can inherit a fourth and those who can inherit an eighth. In this video we're going to speak about those who can inherit potentially a third. And generally speaking there are two sets of individuals. Usually we mention a third but we'll leave that for a special video inshallah later on as it's a bit more intricate and a bit more detailed but we'll stick to the two that are commonly used or that are commonly mentioned the first mention or the first individual i should say is the mother al um the mother can potentially earn a third and that is if three conditions are met the first condition is that there must not be any far'u warith present there must not be any far'u warith present for the mayyit the second condition is that there must not be multiple brothers or sisters i.e. jam'un min al-ikhwa there must not be multiple brothers or sisters and when we say multiple we mean by it two or more meaning there can maximally be one brother or sister present in the equation. If there is more than that, then immediately the mother will not get a third. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ وَلَدٌ وَوَرِثَهُمْ أَبَوَاهُ فَلِأُمِّهِ الثُّلُثِ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُ إِخْوَةٌ فَلِأُمِّهِ السُّلُثِ You see, and so if there is no farawarith, first condition. Second condition, it must not be multiple brothers or sisters present for the mayyit. If there is, then the mother will get a sixth and not a third. However, if the conditions are fulfilled, and there is no multiple brothers or sisters, and there is no farawarith, and again the third condition which is, it is not a mas'ala umariya. It is not an umari mas'ala. Now al mas'ala al umariya, we're going to tackle it inshallah in a special video, in a separate video. But we exclude these two masail, right? Al masail, masailatain, al umariyatain. We'll exclude that, and so that will be the third condition. And so in reality, there are two conditions: no farawarith, and no multiple brothers or sisters. And then the third one, we exclude two special cases, two special scenarios, and we we'll call them uh, the umari issues or the umariyah issues. So that's the first individual who could potentially earn a third. And we mentioned the deed for it. As for the second type of people or the second individual who could potentially earn a third, then it is al min al um. Al min al um. Otherwise known as awlad al um. So awlad al um is a more generic term as it encompasses the female and the male side. Ay al akhu min al um wa al ukhtu min al um. And so we call it, generally speaking, awlad al um. Now, awlad al-um inherit if there are again uh, a couple of or oh, three conditions that are met. The first condition is that again there must not be a farawarith present. There must not be a farawarith present at all. The second condition is that there must be multiple ikhwah min al-um, meaning there must be more than one walad min al-um. So two or more basically. And it doesn't matter whether it's male or female. So there must be more than two, or oh sorry, more than one, so two or more, awlad min al-um, or awlad lil-um, ayy lil-um lil-mayyit. That's the second condition. So the first condition, adam wa far'u al-warith. The second condition is the presence of more than one child from the mother for the mayyit. So the mayyit had essentially more than one ikhwah min al-um. As they say, as for the third condition, is that there must not be an asl warith dhakar present in the equation. There must not be an asl warith dhakar present in the equation. And so that will be essentially no father and no paternal grandfather. And if these three conditions are met, then the awlad al um will earn a third and they will share that third between them equally. They will share that third between them equally remember we have more than one right so they're gonna to have to share this third between them 
equally. Just like with the wives, if there are multiple wives, then they share the fourth between them. Or they share the eighth between them. But in this case of the awlaid uh, um they must share this third equally uh, amongst themselves. It must be divided amongst them equally. And the evidence for this is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the ayah, وَلَكُمْ نِسْفُ قَالَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَصِيَةٍ تُوصُونَ بِهَا أَوْدَيْنِ وَإِنْ كَانَ رَجُلٌ يُرَثُ كَلَالَةً أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٌ وَلَهُ أَخُنَ وُخْتٌ فَلِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمْ السُّلُثِ فَإِنْ كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَا فَهُمْ شُرَكَاءُ فِي الثُّلُثِ So مسألة الكلالة is when there is no أصل وارث ذكر and there is no فرع وارث present meaning those two conditions are fulfilled right no فرع وارث and no أصل وارث ذكر and then we have the third condition which is what that there must be more than one فَإِنْ كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَهُمْ شُرَكَاءُ فِي الثُّلُثِ Right, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. So these are the two individuals who can earn a third, who can potentially earn a third. There is a third group, and that is the issue of the grandfather, the paternal grandfather, when he is linked with, or when there are brothers, or when there are ikhwah in the mas'ala. al ma'a al ikhwah In some scenarios, the jad may also inherit a third, and we'll see it inshallah ta'ala in a separate video, as it's a mas'ala which has a, uh, a lot of talk with regard to it. And so we'll stop here bi as we have concluded and found out who can potentially earn a third, the mother, if those conditions are met that we mentioned, and the awlad al-um, if those conditions that we mentioned are met. هذا والله الموفق لا إله غيره سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته